information. Don't look at the slide. I'm going to simplify that one. Okay? You can understand that, I think, easily. Okay? We have a substrate. Let's call it, because I like to be original, molecule A. Molecule A is transformed to molecule B. And because this does not happen spontaneously, because it's in a cell, and cells need to be regulated, and, then all re and not all reaction happens just like that, just like by lighting a match, we have this activation energy, mountains to go through. So we need enzymes. So we have <laughs> substrate A that will be transformed into a product called product B by an enzyme that we're going to call enzyme 1. Product B can become a substrate and be transformed into product C. So this reaction here taken by itself, we have a substrate and we have a product. But when we look at this, the way it's going, we know that the product here can become a substrate for enzyme, you guessed it, enzyme 2. So from that reaction here, we have A that is transformed into B, B is transformed into C. And now you see, you can't really, you can see what, okay, is going to do this. And he's going to do this. He's going to do this. And he's going to call it D, right? No, I'm going to call it Z. Just to confuse you. So we have this here. We have this here. And then here, we have a little debt here. Enzyme 3. So I started with A, and now I'm down to, down the road to Z. Okay. So these reactions in your cells, in my cells, in your cat cell, in your plant cell, in bacteria, fungus, whatever is alive, reactions like this happen all the time. They are possible. So we have A, B, C, Z. Now let me ask you a question. Okay? Let me ask you a question. Say that this reaction here from A to Z, from the beginning to the end, okay? Let's say that it happens because you ate something that is toxic. Our liver does that all the time. Our liver is good at, it filtrates, cleans the blood from toxins. Okay, our blood is filtered constantly. So you have a lot of this to start with. And then it goes from A to Z. Okay? This enzyme here, is there because A is there. It's connected to this. the presence of the enzyme. Your cell knows that, OK, A is there. Now I need to have enzyme 1 there. OK? So time goes, OK? Hours pass. <coughs> what happens to the quantity of A here? 
You ate whatever was toxic, but you stopped eating it. So what happens to the quantity of A here? It goes down, right? It decreases with time. So I have less and less and less A, right? So A goes to A, and it goes to, I knew we'd do that, to A, and then eventually you don't have this anymore. Okay? So enzyme one here, do you need this enzyme anymore? Why would you need it, right? You don't need that anymore. So you have B, C, and Z. A is not there anymore. Everything A was now converted into B. There's no A anymore. Okay? Now what we want to look at is feedback inhibition. And she, here's our goals. As the reaction goes on and on and on and on, I accumulate more B, and I accumulate more B, and then C, quantity grows, B decreases, and you see Z grows and grows and grows, right? So there is a point where this enzyme here, in whatever enzyme it is, in whatever reaction, there are some pathways in your cells. This enzyme here has an active site. It also has an inhibitor site. And Z eventually is going to connect with that enzyme and inhibit that enzyme. You see, the reaction here that goes on like this eventually is going to be inhibited by its own product. Z is going to have an impact on whatever is happening here, the conversion of A to B to C to Z. So some of those products here accumulate, especially the last one, and those enzymes here have evolved in a way that they will, the, the product will fit somewhere in the enzyme and block block that enzyme, act, that enzyme activity here. And that's important. Because this way, we don't need to have this reaction going all the time. Because there's no more A. There's no more B. There's no more C. We don't need to convert. What would happen to your energy levels if your metabolism was always going on and using, doing reactions it doesn't need to. What do you think would happen to your energy levels? Could go down? No, absolutely. They would go down quickly. It's not sustainable. So all the reactions that are not needed need to be inhibited. And one way to inhibit the, those reactions is by using the end product. That end product become, now becomes an, an inhibitor for one of the enzymes involved in that chain of events here. That's what feedback inhibition is. Okay? Feedback inhibition, that's what, what we saw here.